In this video, I'll use the advanced three steps to sketch method to sketch a graph of tangent that has been shifted. So we'll look at y equals negative tangent of x minus pi over four. And that minus pi over four is your big key that you have a phase shift, which is another name for a horizontal shift. And that's why we'll use our more advanced method because it'll help us handle the shifts. So here's the method outline and here's our grid. And before we get started, let's just take a moment to recall the general form of a tangent equation. So that's y equals a tangent of bx minus c plus d. That'll help us keep our information organized. All right, so let's jump in. Step one is to find the essentials and we'll start by focusing in on our base graph, which is what we'll plot lightly in step two. So for our base graph, we want to identify first a, which is the coefficient in front of tangent. And so we see that there's a negative in front, which is very important, and an understood one. So we'll note that a is negative one. And I like to go ahead and, because there's a negative, mark a note or a star or something on step two, because we know that this graph is going to have a vertical reflection because of that negative out front. And what that does is it flips the original graph of tangent over the x-axis. So it flips it vertically. Um, and I like to go ahead and put the star there so that I remember to do that when I get to step two. All right, otherwise A will just help us with our curve setting points. Um, and we'll get to that when we actually start sketching the graph. B is next. B is the coefficient in front of x. We see in this case it's an understood one. So that tells us, first of all, that there will be one cycle between zero and pi, so one cycle of the graph, and it also helps us calculate the period. And for tangent, we do that calculating pi over b. So pi over one is just pi. The period of this graph is pi. That's just the length of one horizontal cycle. All right, so now that we have that information gathered, we can decide how to label our axes. So for scale labels, this will be how we count each tick mark. And we do this very intentionally for our horizontal axis. We take our period and divide it by four, and that's what we'll use for our tick marks. So we'll count by pi over four. And that ensures that every piece of the graph, every key piece that we plot for our base pattern and then for our final graph, it makes sure that it will align nicely with the tick marks, um, at least for starting off with that base pattern. And we'll see that as we get in. And then for our vertical axis, usually we can count by ones and that'll be perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and label our axes. So horizontally, we're counting by pi over four. So that's one pi over four, two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two, three pi over four, four pi over four, reduces excuse me, reduces to pi, and then we have five pi over four. And we'll go in the negative direction, so very similar, just with negative signs. All right, and then we will label our vertical axis just counting by ones. So one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. All right, so now we're ready to tackle the shifts. And so we see that we can have two kinds of shifts. C over B will be our phase or horizontal shift, and D will be our vertical shift. Um, I think it's pretty quick to see that we don't have any D term in this case, so we don't have any vertical shifting. Um, D is an understood zero would be another way to think about that. And then we have C over B. And so we do wanna be careful here. We wanna make sure we have the sign correct. And so we see in the general form equation with bx minus c. And so when we look in our functions input, we have x minus pi over four. So we see that c must be pi over four, and again, b is one. So we will be moving right pi over four units. Or another way to say that is that our phase shift is positive pi over four. Okay, if it helps you to make a note that that's going to be to the right, you can do that. All right, and notice that's equal to one horizontal grid mark. 
Okay, the final thing I like to do, just so we have everything organized, is find the asymptotes equation. And so this equation will be written in a very specific way so that depending on what you plug in for k, uh, you will be able to generate any asymptote for your graph. All right, and all you have to do to find this is take your inputs. So those are your horizontal transformations, and we'll do a little scratch work up here. We'll take those, x minus pi over 4, and set them equal to the asymptotes of y equals tangent x, or I like to call them the parent asymptotes. So that's pi over 2 plus pi k. So once you have them set equal, you're almost there. Just solve for x. So in this case, all we need to do is add pi over 4 to both sides. And notice that pi over 4 is a like term with pi over 2, but not with the pi k term. Pi over 4 doesn't have a k, so we can just leave that alone. All right, when you add pi over 4 to both sides, notice you have pi over 2 plus pi over 4. So that's the same thing as 2 pi over 4, which means we have 3 pi over 4 plus pi k, where k is an integer. So this is showing us where all of our asymptotes are. And you can get those, like I said earlier, simply by plugging in different integers for k. So notice if you let k equals 0, we should have an asymptote at 3 pi over 4 on our final graph. If you let k equal 1, you would just add pi to 3 pi over 4, so you'd have another asymptote at 7 pi over 4. And let's say you let k equal negative 1. That'd be 3 pi over 4 minus pi, and that means you'd have another asymptote at negative pi over 4. So this is just really nice to know as we get to creating our graph and as we see a final graph, we can use this piece to double check ourselves um, and sometimes it's just nice to know where the vertical asymptotes will be. All right, so we have everything organized, analyzed, and we're ready for step two. We'll plot the base pattern. And remember, we're going to do this lightly or in a different color because this is not our final graph. Um, we will do our shifts in step three, and that will get us our final graph. Okay, and then we know our base pattern for tangent is zero point asymptote point. We see this star, hopefully, and it should trigger the memory of, right, we have a vertical reflection. And so instead of the characteristic tangent graph like that, it'll be reflected like this. Okay, so again, lightly, but let's go ahead and plot one cycle of our graph um, before shifts. So we'll start with are zero at the origin, and I'm just using light blue as my light color, we know that we should have a point that's a curve shaping point below, and it'll happen at our first horizontal tick mark, which is pi over four, and the value for its y coordinate will just be a. So that also is a way we know it'll be negative one, that reflection kind of takes care of itself. All right, at the next horizontal tick mark, we will have our vertical asymptote, just doing that kind of lightly. And then at 3 pi over 4, we'll have another curve shaping point, but this time the y coordinate will be the opposite value of a. Okay, so it's this more positive, or this positive curve shaping point. All right, and then I'll put one point that would show how our cycle closes out and the next one starts, and we have our base pattern without shifts. So that's all there is to step two. Now I'm going to switch to a final color. I'll switch to green, and we're ready for step three. We will shift this temporary base pattern blue graph. We'll sketch our tangent curve, and then we'll repeat for a couple more cycles. All right, so we only had one shift. If we had multiple shifts, like if we had had a vertical shift as well, we could accomplish both of them at the same time. Say we were moving up one. It's pretty easy to move right pi over four and up one at the same time. Um, but for this equation, it's a little bit simpler. We will take each of our light blue points and we will move them right pi over 4, which is one grid unit. So we have our first point here. Okay, moving our second point. Our asymptote moves, so I'll show that right there. And then we have our final point and closes it out. 
so it might help to erase your temporary marks. So we can erase just so we don't get any confusion there. All right, so let's sketch in our tangent curves. All right, and we can show that the graph continues on past. And now we're ready to repeat. So we're just going to copy this pattern over and over and over again. You can do it for as many cycles as you like. Uh, we've kind of run out of the room, run out of room on the right. So I'll just continue the pattern going left in a more negative direction. So we'll have a curve shaping point here, an asymptote, the negative curve shaping point, a zero curve shaping point, another asymptote, and we can sketch all of this in. So we have two and a half cycles of tangent here. And it's nice to notice we talked about the asymptotes earlier and how we could sub in different integers for k. And so we see the asymptotes we talked about. We see our first asymptote here was at 3 pi over 4. We talked about there'd be another one eventually at 7 pi over 4. And if you let k be negative 1, you have an asymptote at negative pi over 4. It's nice to see that when k equals 0, we're here. We said k equals 1 gave us the next asymptote to the right. k equals negative 1 gave us the asymptote to the left of our original cycle. So hopefully you can see that if you let k be negative 2, you should get an asymptote at negative 5 pi over 4. All right, so that's all there is to it. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped you better understand how to get a nice graph for tangent. And hopefully it also helped you understand a lot of the components in, um, in a deeper way. Check out the video description if you want links to more examples of graphing tangent, more help with asymptotes, um, or even uh, worked examples for some of the other trig functions.